Hey, welcome back guys, this is McGuffin FC, and this is game two of Linok vs Naniwa. Of course, Linok using someone else's camp, because he's a Korean who doesn't own a North American account. And the Swedish Naniwa versus the 16 year old Korean Zerg player. Now we have spawned on close air positions for Shattered Temple, the MNG version of course, with the little supply depot down here, which prevents the nasty three pylon block. And it looks like uh, Linok's going to take a quick scout and spot uh, Naniwa. Of course you always want to go that with the close air positions for Zerg. And sometimes you see players moving up a unit at one minute into the game. And that usually spots the Overlord, so you get to know exactly where they are straight away. I believe the MLG versions of Shattered Temple, as well as now the ladder map, don't have close positions, so he knows it's not here. So his first probe is going to go straight here. Now, last game we saw uh, Lenot go for a aggressive speedling opener versus a forge fast, so it looks like might have the repeat of the same game. We've got a low ground pylon for Naniwa, and a gas at 13 or 14 for Lenot. Naniwa is continuing to chrono probes while he tries to scout to see if there is any hatchery first action going down. Of course he has spotted that ghast coming down now, and the spawning pool is now spotted as well. Leonard moving overlords into position to see what Naniwa is up to. Naniwa might be going for that Nexus first again, he is up to 17 probes and 400 minerals, so yep, we're going to see a Nexus before Forge. Paid off for him last game, but we're going to have to see if it does on this one. That Forge is now down. And we're going to have to see how Leonok responds to this. He's got 100 gas and now he is taking all but one drone off gas. And starting Metabolic Boost and his Queen now. Only while continuing to harass the hatchery location. just to see if he sends any probes down, and Linok getting a very obvious overlord right in the middle of his main to spot anything that happens. Of course that's completely safe until the cybernetic score comes out, and he's just spotted the gateway, so he knows that he has the time of a gateway being built, a cybernetic score being built, and then of course the stalker being built, or the sentry, before his overlords are in harm's way. There's cannon going down here, so he repositioned his overlord, and we now have and it's two gateways. I would have thought he would have gone Cybernetic Score, but I guess he might be afraid of aggression. And oh, it's a temporary wall off. There is a small gap. And oh, nice move by Naniwa. He's holding those uh, Zerglings in position. That's why he built that pile on there, just to lock off the uh, position. It only gives you this little path. And he cancelled that once he had finished. He's got this one probe here, and yet he cancels the gateway to build the Cybernetic Core. So, very good uh, city design by Naniwa. He knows exactly where to place the buildings on the map, that's something that's really good to practice. We do have a Roach Warren coming out for Linok. Now, last time Linok stopped at 15 drones for his all in, but this time he's up to 19. But he seems to have stopped drone production for now, and it doesn't. Well, last time he cancelled his uh, hatchery, but it looks like he isn't this time. Of course, you never know, he is a very interesting player. I remember watching him in the GSL seasons. And uh, he had some very interesting infested play, and he also used to go for armor on his mutilisks instead of attack. His reasoning being that it's better to have a, a live clump of mutilisks than a more potent uh, dead group of them that had the um, attack upgrade. So interesting train of thought. He is building eight roaches. Oh, Leonok finding a little sweet spot where he can attack away from this cannon. Harassing with his Zerglings on the probes, forcing Naniwa to mine on the close patches and build an additional cannon. It looks like he cancelled it though. So great moves by Linok. Of course this Stalker's here now. It looks like he's got another probe kill. He's got one Zergling with one kill. Looks like he got two probe kills for that. And here come the Roaches. Now I don't think Naniwa scouted this, this is going to be a bit of a surprise. 
Although it was what Leonok did last game, although this time it's a bit stronger. And Leonok has 25 probes instead of 15. Leonok's Roach is finding that sweet spot where he can attack away from the cannon. So, great exploit of um, Naniwa's initially really good building placement. And that counters the warp gates. And just before his summoning score drop, he started the uh, production of a Stargate. And looks like he's found a little spot where he can attack the Nexus as well. Of course, his Stalker is hitting his Roaches. Throwing down a Force Field there. With these four cannons here, he's got this really short distance where he can actually attack, and he's really using the fullest extent of that. The supply is in Linox's favour this time. He is doing as much as he can with these uh, six roaches. He's gotten the shields down on that nexus now, and will he be able to actually destroy it? The um, warp gates haven't even started for Naniwa, and he hasn't produced any gateway units. So all he's got is these three gateway units, as well as these four cannons to defend against these uh, now five roaches. He lost one. Void raise about 30 seconds from being completed, and that will initially effectively end uh, Leonox aggression with these small group of roaches, but constantly moving them back and forth. Really good control by Leonox. Oh, it looks like he's decided to get out now. Unfortunately, he loses one roach from these stalkers. Looks like he's a little bit oversaturated with his main. Probably transfer. Oh no, he's actually got really good drone situation. He's at 43 drones. Um, one gas at the moment, or at least getting three additional gas. And that Void Ray is now searching for overlords and stray uh, roaches. And Linux is ahead in drones after that harassment. His layer is about halfway done, and these queens are now chasing away those void rays. He's getting three spine crawlers at his main, just to chase away any gateway units that may come up. Now we're going up to six gates with his one star gate, so same build from last turn. Harassing with those two phoenixes he seems to love so much, and one void ray. It's a big clump of overlords here, but there is a lot of queens, and alright creeps bed around his bases. He hasn't uh, started moving it out yet, and here come the gateway units. Linox still tends to fly up, and we have a low ground pylon. This will allow him to warp in on the high ground with the help of these phoenix. So I'm wondering if he's going to engage the front and then try and send these zealots into the mineral line. Although it looks like the uh, gateway units have been spotted, and Linok is now sending in his roaches and zerglings to deal with it. And we do have a Hydralis den almost completed, as well as missile attacks plus one. So I gotta say, I think this is what the Protoss wants. He's forcing Hydras, and then he can easily switch into a Colossus path, and look, we have the Robo Bay going down, just as I say. The Overseer looks a bit out of position, and it looks like he is going to die. I wonder if Linok spotted... No, Linok did not spot any of the Robotech. 10 Hydralisk on the way, as well as the Groove Spines and Missile Pack, uh, plus 2. So there's a uh, spot where Leonok has to do damage with the Hydralisk or defend with them or switch into tech, otherwise the Colossus will just uh, run over his uh, Hydralisk. So fragile. But he is able to chase his this Gateway Stargate army away now. We have Protoss Grand Level 1 coming in, as well as some additional Gateway units. The Zerglings are harassing these uh, last units that are getting away from the pack. Leonok in about 13 supply lead at the moment. It's getting more Hydralisks as well as an infestation pit. And here we have the robotic support bay coming down for Naniwa. It's actually just called the Robo Bay in uh, Starcraft 2. I think it was the Robo Support Bay in uh, Brood War. Instead of uh, 
Colossus it was Reavers that it supported. As well as all the upgrades. The Robo units. We have a group of Rooch and Hydralisk for Lenok, uh, but we have a Gateway Stargate army. So I mean, with the Graviton lift, he could take out quite a few of these um, Hydralisk, or the Gateway units take out. So, uh, but we now have reinforcements from the uh, Zerg, and his army is actually starting to look quite scary. Of course, those Colossus won't be out for a little while. In fact, it'll be another 70 seconds before the first one's out, as well as no Thimble Lance yet. Those Hydralisk are shredding those Gateway units. Force with blocking off the Hydralisk, but now they're just turning to get the Stargate units. Naniwa almost saved that Phoenix, but it just didn't go in time. Zerg at about a 20 supply lead now. Forge is going down, and Investors have been finished for Lenok. Lenok also getting a third out to the side there. Didn't quite take down those rocks when the Stargate army took in, so he didn't take this safer one, I believe. Now, if he can get some really good fungals off, the Phoenix won't be able to manoeuvre and the Colossus won't be able to move back into the army as well, so... Could be really up to these uh, infestors. He doesn't have the Neural Parasite, not many Zergs are getting it these days with the nerf to its range. Will he be able to do something with this? He's got about a 30 supply lead now, The Zerg uh, macro kicking in now. He's got four hatcheries in total, with three expansions almost completed. So he's got to get some really good fungals, and pick off the key units, like the Colossus. And then he should actually be in a good spot. Nani wants to catch up a little bit, and being a bit bold, moving out, he's got two Colossus now. Thermal Lance is almost finished. When you've got those two Colossus, they start to be deadly with Thermal Lance. Of course, uh, he's not fighting on creep, so these Hydralisks are so slow. And they're clumping up quite a lot, so the Colossus is going to do a lot of damage. Lenox Spire is still about 40 seconds out. And Naniwa's Thermal Lance has finished, and it's now only a 12 supply difference. So Naniwa has caught up. Naniwa trying to go to the middle map, although I don't think he has any observers. Didn't have time to build one in, in the uh, aggressive pace that uh, Linux was setting, and interestingly placed spine crawlers here. Looks like Lenok is going in now, but he's on creep, so that gives him the advantage he needs. Force field blocking off the entire army. Hydralis can hit a few of the gateway units, but it's just enough, and we have a good fungal here. Fungling this group of units. Although those Hydralis can go down so quickly. Each of these Colossus has about six to seven kills. Now we're retreating a bit, and the supplies are about... They were even for a moment, but then Naniwa, uh, Lenox, uh, Lape started to kick in, and now he is about 30 supply up again. And Naniwa really going in, being aggressive, using force fields. We've got queens in the battle. Looks like the queen's air attack is gonna hitting the Colossus. And those Colossus are just melting everything. We've only got a few roaches left, but they seem to be pushing the uh, Protoss back. And the Corruptors are finally out. These Corruptors, with this so little gateway units, these Corruptors will be able to just take out all these Colossus. If he actually gets in the way, I'd be quite surprised. And of course he's got this creep spared so well, it's a brave drone out here. It's carrying Vespine gas. It's a present for the Protoss, and... There we go, the Colossus goes down. Maybe Vespine glass is extremely flammable, and it destroyed their Colossus. Some secret we don't know that Lenok does. And we have a probe centipede coming down to the gold expansion. However, he hasn't taken out the rock yet, and he doesn't have any nexus there. It's just because he's mined out. It's 19 minutes into the game, and he has to not expand because of the pressure the Zerg's putting out. And now Lenox seems to be building almost purely roaches, a couple of investors, and he's already got enough corruptors to deal with the current Colossus count. So he's just going into roach corruptor. He's got plus two attack versus uh, plus one plus one, and Lenox is almost completely a short of victory now. It's about 60 supply up and 91 GG's. So that ties up the, the series for Lenok. 1-1. Let's head into the next game.